Thank you. Thank you very much. It's so exciting to be here with you. It's so exciting to be able to have the opportunity and privilege to preach here today, and I'm just thrilled. I, I feel like this is family, so, and thanks, Dad, for the introduction. Have you guys noticed that sometimes there is one particular person in the family that seems like all the stories points towards them? <laughs> when I was preparing for this week, I actually realized that's me. And if you don't know who that is, it may be you. And so I started thinking about it, and I was like, my, listen, I have two siblings, Josh and Elaine, and out of all the stories my dad's told, I've been told on way more than both of them put together. My mom spoke here at Pink, she told on me. My wife spoke here in, in Pink, she told on me. My brothers preached here, he told on me. My sister preached here, and she told on me. My brother-in-law preached here, and he told on me. So I thought I'd write down all the list today and tell you my side of the story of what I think happened. I'm just joking. I do love my family very, very much, uh, and it's exciting to be able to do ministry with them, to be able to uh, be focused on just loving people, loving you, but doing that as a family. Let me introduce my wife, my beautiful, amazing wife, Bridget Morris. We have three kids, Parker, Mitchell, and Bray. Parker is eight, Mitchell is six, and Bray is four. So two boys and a little girl. They are not here today. They are with Nana, which is Bridget's mom. So Bridget's mom is taking care of them for us. A little bit about us and our family is uh, we live on a couple acres. We actually had to sacrifice, we did live in Keller. We kind of sacrificed the commute and moved farther away so that we could move out on a couple acres. We have two cows. We have some sheep. Uh, oh no, we had some sheep until one of them attacked Bridget and then they had to go. We have some ducks and we have two uh, guard dogs kind of. They're supposed to be livestock guardian dogs, but really they're just barking machines. <laughs> and one is named Blue, the other one is Bell. So together we have Blue Bell, <laughs> and then we have lots of chickens. And a little story about me and Bridget is there was probably a time that I realized, you know what, it'd probably be better to live farther away on a couple acres than to experience what we were before. So we lived in a subdivision, and in that subdivision, we had a house that had very small property lines on it. So to give you a, a picture of it, so our house was here. Our neighbor's house was a corner lot, and their backyard faced the side of our yard. Our house was elevated a little bit. There was a fence, but since the, it was elevated, the fence was on their side of the property, so it was a very low fence. We used that side of the house to keep all of our chickens. So we had chickens all on the side of the house, and we used that as what was, we called a chicken run. And so what I had also learned is in the winter, whenever it's times like this, that if the chickens have more light, then they will produce more eggs. And so what I had done is I had done a string of lights and put spotlights all out there so that the chickens would lay more eggs. And so it was like this time of the year to where it starts getting darker earlier, and I had realized I had not gotten the eggs. Now, the neighbors that back our house, they had actually moved out, new neighbors had moved in, and they had been remodeling the house, and so I had not seen them. They weren't living there. And so I got very used to not having neighbors. And so one night, I had realized I had not gotten the eggs yet, and I had already made myself very comfortable for the evening, <laughs> meaning I was in my boxer briefs. So here I am, in my underwear and think, I'm just going to run out, get the eggs real fast, come back in. I slip on my cowboy boots and just go and walk right out there to get my eggs for the evening. I have just my boots, my... Now, remember I said, picture this with me. Don't picture this too much. <laughs> so I walk out with my basket and my boots on, and I walk right through all the spotlights there, and I am getting the eggs when suddenly I hear voices. This isn't in my head. This is the neighbors. They just walked out and they have decided they're gonna visit their house. So they walk out with them, their kids, and their friends. 
I thought, this is not a good way to meet my neighbors for the first time. So here I am hiding behind the egg basket over there, just trying to be as still as I can so they don't know, because who wants to be that person that just walks out? Obviously, you have to say something. You're only 15 feet away from each other and say, well, howdy ho, neighbor. It's nice to meet you. I love what you've done with the place. So I was strategizing on a way out of this. And so I realized, you know what, maybe if I sneak around, I can climb over the front fence, drop down, run across, and nobody will know. Something else about that, our house, is that our house tended to be the place where all the neighborhood kids loved to play. So they would just play all on the street there, and there would be kids there, parents would come out, bring lawn chairs, sit on the street, and just enjoy the kids playing. But I thought, it's dark, nobody will see. So I slither through, doing a little army crawl, climb the fence, drop down, take off running across the front of the yard when I didn't think about it, but I had four motion lights. Doof, 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 doof. I run inside and say to Brid, and she could tell I'm very frazzled and looking very distraught, and uh, she said, what is wrong with you? And this is what I said, we got to (laughs) move. You don't want to be that guy that gets the letters from the HOA. Dear Mr. Morris, please wear pants. Think of the children. (laughs) So now we live out on a couple acres a little farther away, and we've enjoyed that lifestyle. But with that said, the title of the message today is Don't Flatter Yourself. (laughs) Don't Flatter Yourself. And the inspiration of this message comes from 1 Corinthians And we are going to end in 1 Corinthians, but there is a uh, model that 1 Corinthians show, and so really, really we're going to end on talking about honor. But the very first point is, uh, the very first point is don't flatter. So title of the message is don't flatter yourself. The first point is don't flatter. So it was another, uh, I told you my eight-year-old son, it was another church service similar to this and we were all sitting on the front row. This was when he was probably about three years old. And uh, so we're all on the front row. It's one of those moments that the service gets a little bit quieter. You're seeing what the Holy Spirit's doing. My son's sitting right there on the front row. He is standing on the chair. He gives his foot a little stomp, cups his hands over his mouth and yells, boring. There's a kid that doesn't struggle struggle with flattery right there. That is why he's with Nana today. But we are not to be living in a world of flattery. We're to be living in a world of honor. How often, but how oftentimes do we see flattery instead of honor? But we are called to live with honor instead of flattery. Let me read what the Bible says about flattery. Proverbs 20, 19 says, He who goes about as a talebearer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with one who flatters with his lips. 26.28 says, a flattery mouth works ruin. And then 28.23 says, he who rebukes a man will find more favor afterward than he who flatters with his tongue. So what is flattery? Flattery is praising somebody else, but for your own personal gain. It's when we're praising somebody else. It's like worshiping somebody else, but you're doing it for your own personal gain. And maybe that personal gain is just because you're looking to be liked. Maybe it's so that you're looking for a promotion. Maybe it's looking for a sale. Whatever it is, it's doing something for the other person and flattering them, but for your own sake. I was talking to uh, two individuals that worked at a corporation, uh, a business, and They were a little bit offended with each other, but one of them was telling me, said, you know, I called this meeting with this other person, and we have this entire meeting. I go over all these details with them, and at the end of the meeting, I said, "Uh, was this meeting beneficial to you? It was a long pause. Five seconds, probably felt like 30 seconds, when suddenly the other employee says, nope. Nope, this was not. So... Uh, then, when they're telling me this, they said, well, couldn't they have at least just flattered me? But see, the thing is, we should not be looking to flatter other people, nor should we be looking to flatter ourselves, or to be flattered. Now, with that said, the guy that said, nope, he probably could have been more encouraging than he was. 
Because we're not called to flatter, but we are called to encourage, meaning to put courage in. So what is the difference between flattery and encouragement? Flattery is an insincere compliment, but for your own personal gain. When encouragement is a sincere compliment, but it's for the other person's gain. It's so that the other person can benefit from it. So as we are talking to people, we need to be assessing in ourselves, saying, is this for them or is this for me? Am I doing this for their sake or am I doing this for my sake? And if you're flattering somebody for a promotion or whatever it is, check your motive. We, if, listen, if man puts you into a position, then man can take you out of that position. But if God puts you in a position, then only God can take you out of that position. So we need to be encouraging, but not people of flattery. See how uh, I, I shared earlier how my dad always told stories on me, but now I get to do it to my kids, and it's a lovely thing. So back to my kids, uh, Parker and Mitchell. Parker's now eight, Mitchell's six. Parker uh, and uh, the whole family was at a restaurant one evening, and there was some country music on. And on, in this country music, one of the phrases or lyrics for this song said, what's a guy got to do to get a girl in this town? My eight-year-old said, ugh, I don't know what a guy has to do to get a girl in this town. My six-year-old said, I do. You got to do something nice for her. So I know I already probably need to be coaching my six-year-old the difference between flattery and encouraging to make sure that she, he is very encouraging, but not necessarily erring on the flattery side. So number one is don't flatter yourself. Number two is to speak truth. We are to speak truth. Colossians 3 verse 9 says, Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So it says, do not lie to one another because you have put off the old man. We have put off the old man. And we are not to be people of deceit, people who lie, but we should be people of honesty. I, I think it's unique how sometimes we can even disguise lying as even saying, well, that, that's just a little white lie. That, that, that's just a little white lie. I, I just did that as a little white lie, as if that's just like a little angel lie. You know, that lie, that lie has a little halo over it. I just lie to you so much because I just love you so much. That's it. But we are to be people of honesty, people that speak truth. And when I say that we should be people that speak truth, let me just clarify, I am not saying that that means that we should be people that just say the first thing that comes to our mind. We've met some of those people, right? And that can be dangerous. You need to steward your words. I remember when I was like probably about 14 years old, my dad had a friend and he had some land out probably four hours away from here. So we were out there. It was my dad, my brother and I and him. And so we are at that land and we drive into town. We go into this little gas station convenience store and I go ahead and walk in. There's probably six, seven people in there. When I go in there, I notice that there's a guy behind the cash register wearing a very unique shirt. I'm not gonna say like what it is in case one of you is wearing it, but I'm looking at him, no, I'm joking. Uh, but he was wearing a very unique shirt. And so the guy that was our friend, he's just one of those big guys with a big personality that makes a scene wherever he goes, it seems. And so all of a sudden he comes in the door has a cowbell on it. He swings open the door and makes a big scene. Everybody sees him, and all of a sudden, he looks right at the guy behind the cash register and he goes, wow, are those back in style already? <laughs> oh, and then the people that were in, the, uh, in there were just all of a sudden like picking up Cheetos like they were seriously in, interested in the ingredients just sitting there laughing. But he was being what he thought honest, probably, but it was hurtful. We, we need to be kind and gentle. Ephesians um, yeah, 4.15 says, but speaking truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. With all truth we share, we need to share it with love. Everything that we're sharing, we need to make sure that this is covered in love, that we're not sharing it to be hurtful, we're not sharing it to be mean, but we are honest, truthful people, but we share every truth 
in love. So why? Why? Why do we need, why is it so important to speak truth? I know like we'd say, well, yeah, it's in the Bible, but why is it so important to speak truth? John 14, six says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, Jesus says, I am the truth. Not just I am some truth, I am the truth. It's our job to tell people about the ultimate truth, Jesus Christ. That's our job, to tell people about truth, Jesus. But if we don't have a reputation of telling truth, then who's gonna tell, believe us whenever we tell them about the ultimate truth, Jesus Christ? And we are representing him, and if he is truth, then it is very important that we speak truth to people. That whenever people hear something that you, a testimony or whatever, that they could say, no matter what it is, they could say, you know what, I'm gonna believe them because I have never, ever known that person to lie to me. I've never known that person to be deceitful in any way. That person always, always in love shared the truth. So I'm gonna believe them. Whenever we share the truth, then people can believe us if we have a reputation of sharing truth. So I told you uh, we live out on a couple acres. We did this farm, uh, like this, not farm, but little garden outside, and we planted last year a bunch of tomatoes, and the tomato plants. And so we planted all these tomato plants, and the thing about planting a bunch of tomato plants is that if you take care of them, you get a lot of tomatoes. And so here we had this abundance of tomatoes, and we realized, you know, there's only so much you can do with tomatoes. It's not like every evening you're like, hey, kids, let's all sit down and eat 30 tomatoes together. <laughs> there's just no need. It's not that good. And so we had all these tomatoes, and so we started getting creative with the recipes of what, how to use tomatoes. And so we, Bridget and I, we started making our very own ketchup. And we did a few batches, we explored it, and we made our own ketchup. We thought we nailed it. We made some pretty incredible ketchup, we thought. And so, some of you know my dad is quite the ketchup connoisseur. He loves ketchup. So one day he was over at our house, and so I was all excited, I'm proud of this ketchup, to share this new made ketchup with him. And so he sits down, I put some ketchup on his plate, and all of a sudden he takes a bite and says, mm, James, mm, this, this ketchup is without a doubt, after all the ketchup I've ever tasted, for sure, the worst ketchup I have ever had. Ha, <laughs> oh, how could you say that? No, I, I worked hard on that ketchup. But then I realized a couple days later, I opened up the fridge and there's two bottles of ketchup and a label on the ground. And what I realized is that we had actually tried to make one version of super healthy ketchup. Bridget's way more healthier than I, so we made one ketchup version with no sugar, none of the good stuff in it, and that ketchup truly was horrible. And that happened to be the ketchup I gave my dad. I didn't know that, but I, as I think about it now, like, I'm grateful he would tell me the truth. And how much more does that strengthen his testimony whenever he's sharing about the ultimate truth. Because he is known as a, and has a reputation of somebody that speaks truth. And so when we speak truth, then people can trust us and believe us even more when we share about the ultimate truth, Jesus Christ. So number one, don't flatter. Number two, speak truth. And number three is to honor. And so, as we're looking at honor, and I told you that uh, 1 Corinthians was the inspiration of this message, these three points uh, was 1 Corinthians, and we're gonna dive into that to what I believe is a, a key to the area of honor. But what is honor? When you look at the Greek root word of honor, it means to respect. Another definition for it is to uh, esteem. So when we honor, we respect, we esteem. Now, if you're like me, I don't really use the word esteem in my daily vocabulary. I don't just say, you know what? I really esteem my morning coffee. What, you esteem it? No, I esteem it. So I had to look up the definition of esteem. Esteem means to put uh, value on, 
When we esteem something, we have placed a value on it. So when we honor somebody, we place a value on them. When we honor somebody, we respect them. And so that's what honoring, when we honor somebody, means. And so let me ask, who should we be honoring? 1 Peter 2.17 says, honor all people. So whoever is in all, that's who you should be honoring. We should be honoring all people. So regardless of their age, their gender, their race, their finances, the way you meet them, how you meet them, no matter who it is, it's our job to honor all people, to treat them with respect and to place value on them. We place value by, on them, and that by doing so, we are honoring them. Now with that, there are some people that the scripture says we're supposed to actually give more honor to, or an additional portion of honor, a double portion for example, 1 Timothy 5.17 says, Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. So there are some people that we actually, we honor everybody, but there's some people that we give double honor to, that we give more honor to. And the Bible goes on to different people that we give more honor to, our spiritual elders, widows, spouses, older people, Jewish people, governmental leaders, there's a lot of scriptures on giving honor to our father and mother. We're to give honor to our parents. And so why? Why give honor to people? There's a blessing with honor. We're not to live in a world of flattery. We're to live in a world of honor, but there's a blessing from God when we honor. For instance, whenever it talks about honoring your parents, it says that uh, it will be well with you and you will have long life. Well, luckily, it'll be well with you and long life because if you have, just have long life then, and it's not well with you, that's probably not as good. But when we honor our parents, it will be well with us and we will be given long life. When we honor as God has told us to, there's a blessing there. So who's the ultimate honor go to? The ultimate honor belongs to the Lord. The ultimate honor belongs to God. And if we're placing value on what he said, we're respecting what he says, if he tells us to honor all people, if he tells us to honor these people, then actually by honoring them, it's a form of honoring God. And so we can actually put an emphasis on honoring people. And by doing so, we could be honoring God by doing that. So we are to be people of honor. The, uh, I mentioned that the uh, message came from 1 Corinthians. And so 1 Corinthians is a book that Paul writes. It's a very, uh, one at that point, a book. It was considered a letter that he wrote to the church of Corinth. And it was a very corrective letter. And out of all the letters he wrote, it's one of the most corrective letters that he wrote. And so he was writing a letter to them to, to speak very honest truth in some areas. Some of the areas he covered was disunity, doubting his authority, fornication, marital status, eating meat from idol worship, husband and wife relationship, the Lord's table, which turned into a picnic, misuse of spiritual gifts, not walking in love. So here he is writing this letter to them, and I found it so encouraging when the Lord showed this to me that I wanted to share it with you to encourage you, but this is how he starts the letter. Here he is writing this letter, but the first thing he does is starts with loving on them, with honoring them. So 1 Corinthians 1 verse 4 says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him, in all utterance, in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. What he says is, listen, when I, when I think about you, Church of Corinth, I'm, I'm excited. I thank God for you. There's been no gift in you that has been left out. I'm so grateful for you. And here's the key when honoring somebody. It's not to just, just as Paul did, he didn't just focus on the natural. 
but he looked at them and he saw what God saw in them. And so when we need to honor somebody, picture, Lord, how do you see this person? Lord, you love this person. You care so much about this person. Lord, you're, you have not limited them from giftings. They're, they have an open door to you. And so when we're honoring people, whether even if sometimes there's somebody that you work with or whatever that seems difficult to honor, we don't have to shower them with flattery, but we can actually say, Lord, show me how you see them. Lord, I want to honor well, but Lord, give me the eyes to see what you see in them. And you can speak that into them. You can treat them with honor and respect and value by seeing them in a different light, seeing them in God's light. And that has changed the way that I'm able to honor some people. And I think if we just can focus on, Lord, how do you see these people? Then we can, we can change the world. We can honor all people. We can honor the people that God has put in our lives and told us to do this. And doing this, what Paul is doing is he is speaking truth, but he's starting off in love. He is surrounding the truth with genuine love for the people. It goes back to a statement that sometimes you hear people say that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And in this, he is showing them, I really care about you. Not only do I care about you, but God cares about you. I care about you so much. So we're supposed to honor all people. All people. The little story is uh, Bridget and I, we were at a family dinner and with my parents, and we were walking out of the restaurant. And we see, I, I saw this person that I could tell had experienced some hard times. And so I'm holding Bridget's hand, and I said, hold on, Bridget, wait, watch this. She said, what? I said, my dad is about to walk over, give that person $100, tell them about Jesus, and just love on them. Well, he did. He walked over there, told him about Jesus, he gave him $100, and just gave him a big hug, told, and just, they, it was beautiful. But you said, how did you know that? I said, because it's not, it, because that's who he is. It's not just what he does, it's who he is. It, he is somebody that honors all people. He sees the value on every single person. And all of us can see the value that God has placed on every person. So with that, I want to pray with you. If you don't mind just closing your eyes, taking a moment with the Lord and saying, Lord, what are you saying to me through this message? Holy Spirit, speak to me. Some of you may feel like, I'm, I feel like I've messed up my opportunity to honor some specific person or in this area. But just start today. Honor people. For some of you, I feel like God may put a specific person in your life and give you the strategy and the ways in which you could honor them. Could give you the eyes to see them the way that God sees them. And then how that will change your actions, your words, and how you talk to them in everything. Lord, give us your heart for people. That we may be people of honesty, that don't flatter, but we encourage people. We will be people that set it, our face, on making sure that we honor people. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and what you're doing in every single person here at Gateway. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to invite you to stand with us, if you would, please. As you, can we thank Pastor James again? Thank you for that message, James. And I want to invite you now, I know James just prayed in a response. I want to invite you to respond. Uh, but I want to do this. I want to just ask you to close your eyes for a second. I know we just prayed. Maybe the Lord wasn't done doing a work in you. Maybe you've, you've made that response to this message. Maybe the issue of honor is a, is a significant thing in your life. You know, this, this season in our country, there's, there's a lot of questions about honor and how that happens and how it's done. And I just wanna invite us as believers to receive what the Lord has to say about honor. 
I want to invite you too to think right now and ask the Lord, God, is there anything else that you're doing in my life? And you need prayer for that today. Maybe you're, you're, you're dealing with a, a significant relational issue. Maybe you're dealing with a financial issue. Maybe just the season has you burdened. I wanna pray for you. I just wanna ask you if that's you, eyes are closed. Just would you raise your hand and let me know if you need prayer. Just lift your hands up. The Lord knows, he knows your prayer. I'm not gonna do anything to embarrass you. I just wanna pray for you. And I know the Lord sees you. The Lord knows what's going on in your life. And so God, I pray right now for every hand raised Lord, who, who are, are saying, there's, there's an issue in my life today, God, and I need you to show up. God, I need you to make yourself known in this area of my life. God, I pray you do that today. I thank you as we worship you for all of your glory and majesty. I thank you, God, that we know you are a personal God to us. You see every hand raised. You know every issue present in every life. And so, God, would you meet that need? Would you meet us where we are today, Lord? Bring your answer or bring your perspective. Lord, if it's a time delayed of your answer, help us to see what you're doing in our lives right now. God, I pray your blessing on your people. Bring your answer, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, I wanna encourage you too, if you want someone to pray with you, you can text that prayer to 71010. Uh, and as you leave today, we have prayer tables uh, out in the lobby. You can have someone pray with you uh, as you go today. But we've got a couple more announcements just before we go. More, yes, just a few more announcements. Okay, if you are doing Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes, you have this weekend and next to turn those in. So you can turn those in out there in the front. Also, you can go online to find out how to fill a shoe box. Also, do not forget, you do not want to miss our night of worship at all campuses, 6 o'clock tonight. So we want to see you there. And then finally, the last one is, oh, yes, our build team. Were you inspired by all the build team volunteers? Yeah. So if you have decided after seeing all the volunteers that you know you want to serve at Gateway Church, either text SERVE to 71010, or you can find a build team member out in the front and ask them about becoming part of the build team. We love you. Jesus loves you. Go and have a great week.